You want a war? You're gonna get one. Forget the lies, the money. We're in this together and through it all. They said that nothing's forever. Welcome back to Reliving the War and welcome to the 22nd of December 1997. We are celebrating the holidays on WWF Raw and WCW Nitro this week with Raw coming from Lowell, Massachusetts, while Nitro comes live from Macon, Georgia. We are six days away from WCW's most financially successful pay-per-view of all time, Starcade 1997, and the company are going to promote the show in a very surreal manner. Starcade will get a full review video on the channel, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to watch it as soon as it becomes available. You'd also be helping the channel out a great lot. Nitro's a three hour broadcast again this week, so let's check out the first portion of the show. Nitro starts with some comments from Eric Bischoff. Eric tells Larry Sabisco to forget Shea's stadium, forget Bruno San Martino, and forget Nick Bockwinkle. It's Starcade 1997, Sabisco's name goes down in infamy because Larry's gonna hand WCW Nitro over to the New World Order. Bischoff says Nitro changed the industry and it should have been the NWOs a long time ago. He then puts himself over and he talks about humiliating Sabisco at the pay-per-view, and Eric talks about the NWO backing him up and how Bret Hart, an NWO guy apparently, is going to be the referee, making this Sunday night's match all too easy for Eric Bischoff. Eric wraps it up by saying there's a big holiday treat tonight for NWO fans, tis the season to be surprised, so Eric doesn't reveal what the holiday treat is. The first match of the evening featured Fit Finley taking on Eddie Guerrero. Eddie faces Dean Malenko at Starcade, however that match was kinda up in the air at this point. Dean's wife was about to give birth and Dean was told he could have time off when his baby arrived, so it's another Starcade contest that might not even take place. After taking a superplex, Eddie decided to walk out of the match. Fuck it, why not? Finley wins via countout. Speaking of matches that might not happen, WCW aired a quick feature on the Giant vs Kevin Nash showdown. It's all about the Giant getting revenge for Nash crushing his hand at World War 3. We got to see the Ming vs Steve McMichael match that was supposed to take place last week. This one ended when Jimmy Hart swung a chair at Mongo and Mongo ducked out of the way, so Jimmy Hart passed Ming a wooden chair to compensate. Mongo ends up getting the chair and he breaks it over Ming's head. All this does is piss the Minger off and Mongo Mongo has to batter his opponent with another chair. Ming takes the Mongo spike and Mongo wins the match. Steve McMichael vs Goldberg takes place this week at Starcade. DDP comes out for an interview and Mean Gene confirms that Dallas Page vs Kurt Hennig is now booked for the pay per view. Flares out and sews the steel cage. This pay per view seems cursed, doesn't it? Dallas says there's a Christmas present waiting for him at Starcade. It's Kurt Hennig. DDP's gonna rip up his present piece by piece and then Dallas plans on giving Kurt his Christmas present. It won't be a Christmas surprise because Kurt knows what it is. DDP will make Hennig feel the bang this Sunday. It's Starcade. WCW then presented a trios match. Rey Mysterio, Hector Garza and Juventud Guerrera versus Silver King, Psychosis and La Parca. I'm pretty sure we've seen this match before. Hector landed his corkscrew to the outside with no problems at all, great to see, and Rey got the win by hitting Silver King with a West Coast pop. The last match of the hour featured Chris Benoit taking on Van Hammer. Chris continues to work his way through flock members, but the outcome's the same really. Benoit dominates the match and he has to deal with the flock until the numbers game becomes too much. Perry Saturn locks in the rings of Saturn once again, and you may be wondering where the hell Raven's been these past few weeks. Well, he's been dealing with an inflamed pancreas. Benoit vs Raven was supposed to take place at Starcade, but that match too seems to be up in the air at the moment. The WWF kicked things off with a DX promo while on TNT the hostile takeover of Nitro begins. Sean and Hunter are wearing robes tonight and Sean says there's a surprise in store for all the good boys and girls in attendance, but before we get to that, DX have a few things they need to address. Sean looks incredibly sober tonight, doesn't he? That's one sober man right there. Triple H talks about the Road Warriors and how DX destroyed their legacy in a single day. And as for the New Age Outlaws, Hunter says Road Dogg and Billy Gunn just came along like a couple of vultures last week. The Outlaws shouldn't take credit for what happened to the Legion of Doom. And Triple 
Triple H warned Road Dogg and Billy Gunn to stay out of DX's business. As for the Nugget Owen Hart, Triple H won a prestigious rock paper scissors contest last week and that means Hemsley gets the honour of sending Owen packing like the rest of the hearts. Sean then wants to talk about The Undertaker, HBK reminds the dead man that he couldn't beat him at ground zero and at bad blood, Taker can ask any woman in the world, HBK doesn't rest in peace, he can stay up all night. Nice, nice. Sean and Hunter unrobe, they show off their Christmas boxers, and then they show off their little Christmas thongs while China puts some mistletoe above their asses. We can see in the crowd who gets a little excited for this. These girls here couldn't believe their eyes, this lady wanted to capture the moment forever with a photo, and these two hornballs couldn't get enough of Triple H's heavy artillery. Dirty bastards. Big Commissioner Slaughter smells balls and he makes his way down to the ring. Slaughter's in the Christmas spirit so he has a gift for DX. Slaughter says Sean hasn't defended his European title in over 60 days. HBK says he's busy, he's the WWF champion after all, but Slaughter doesn't care. Sean must defend his title tonight on Raw or it's getting stripped from the Heartbreak Kid. HBK says he doesn't give titles away, fucking liar, and Sean says he'll defend the belt against anybody, he doesn't care, bring it on. Slaughter then drops a bombshell, Sean's gonna defend the European title tonight against Triple H. If Sean doesn't defend the belt against Hunter, then Slaughter's taking the belt away. There's a bit of tension here, Triple H says Slaughter's just trying to ruin Sean's Christmas because Hunter will take the belt later for himself, and Sean reminds Hunter that the heartbreak head lays down for nobody. So Shawn Michaels vs Triple H is gonna take place tonight on Monday Night Raw. When Nitro comes back on the air after a commercial break, the commentators are getting hustled by the NWO. Rick Rude, Buff Bagwell, Scott Norton, Conan and Vincent tell the commentators to beat it and at first it looks like another typical commentary desk takeover but no, the NWO go way beyond that this week. This is an actual takeover of Monday Nitro. Cameramen are told to wear NWO shirts or get out, guys in the production truck are told to join the takeover too, and a crew comes out to remove all WCW branding and replace it with NWO logos. What we're seeing here is what NWO Nitro could look like and what's more, there were plans for Nitro to really become the NWO show when Thunder launched in a few weeks time. Looking back with the benefit of hindsight, most would call this stupid, it's the NWO getting forced down everyone's throats once again and it's taking up way too much air time, but you have to think about seeing this back in 1997 and really taking it in as it happened live. A faction is actually taking over the show properly and they're making good on a claim they've been making all year. The NWO now owns Monday Nitro, for a while at least. There's a new take on the entrance way, there's new commentators, there's a new show open and there's new graphics for superstar names during entrances. I do agree though that this is taking up way too much time, over 10 minutes is spent on just the makeover and you're probably saying 10 minutes isn't all that long, but considering that Monday Nitro matches are lucky to hit the 3 minute mark, that should tell you how precious each and every minute truly is on TNT every Monday night. Still, this is another noteworthy moment of the Monday Night War and I do find it interesting to watch. Monday Nitro is getting completely disassembled because Eric Bischoff wants to show fans what it's gonna be like from next week onwards after he beats Larry Sabisco at Starcade. And for the remainder of this episode of Reliving the War, it's now WWF Raw's War vs NWO Nitro. The NWO cut a promo on Monday Nitro while Thrasher takes on Henry Godwin. <laughs> Fucking hell, Thrasher vs Henry Godwin. It's just after that Nitro takeover stuff, the headbanger vs the Godwin seems a bit, I don't know, shit. Michael Cole says the headbangers defeated the Godwins on shotgun Saturday night and Henry says the headbangers got lucky and revenge is gonna be ugly. He then says the New Age Outlaws owe the Godwins a tag team title shot. Wonderful. One minute of action here folks, one whole solid action packed minute. The two lock up and Phineas trips Thrasher from the outside giving Henry a chance to hit a big clothesline. Henry can't stay in control though, Thrasher comes right back at him and a corner hip attack from the headbanger leads to Henry hitting the mat. He slowly gets up but here comes Thrasher with a flying crossbody. And here comes Phineas to break up the cover, DQ, Thrasher wins. Mosh comes in to help but he goes down after a slop drop and the Godwins whip the headbangers with their belts. That's it, nothing more, nothing less. After the bout we get reminded about the New Age Outlaws attack on Dude Love last week. Jeez, these outlaws are all over the show already and they haven't even shown up yet. 
But we see the attack on the dudester and afterwards Mankind cuts a promo. He says, when you hurt dude love, you also hurt Mankind. Mankind wanted to indulge in some Christmas festivities, but he can't do that. Still, it's that time of year when it's better to give than to receive and Mankind will give the outlaws the beating of their lives. Mankind says it'll be the fight before Christmas. Over on Nitro, Eric Bischoff comes to the ring on a motorcycle and he introduces the entire NWO faction. The boys make their entrance and Bischoff says the NWO plan on taking out Lex Luger tonight on NWO Nitro. Eric then says tonight is Hogan's night, nobody would be here if it wasn't for Hulk. So the NWO have a few Christmas presents for the world champ. Pages fall from the ceiling, each one giving Christmas greetings to Hollywood Hogan. And here comes Hogan's first gift. Some Jaybrone comes to the ringside on a motorcycle and Bischoff says Six Paw couldn't be here tonight, but Six suggested getting Hulk the ride of all rides. So Hulk's gonna ride this poor guy into the wee hours of the night. Just kidding, he got himself a new bike. But wait, there's more. Jaybrone comes back with another bike for when Hogan's in that Hollywood frame of mind, according to Eric Bischoff. And Hogan must have been a good brother this year cause the Hulkster gets himself a stretchy, stretchy, stretchy limousine, complete with a butler, champagne, a hot tub and two random hookers. Hulk says, thanks daddy, this is the best Christmas ever, while Vincent wonders where the fuck his presents are. The festive frolics continue on Raw as Stone Cold meets Santa Claus while on NWO Nitro, Rick Steiner takes on Scott Norton. The Raw footage we see next is actually from last week when Raw went off the air. Saint Nick's in the ring and Big Santa wants Sable for Christmas but he's told to stop being a dirtbag. Sable won't be sitting on Santa's lap tonight. Santa sends a kid back to their seat when the kid says this bozo isn't the real Santa Claus. So Stone Cold comes out to confront this fuck and put him in his place. Austin tells Santa to shut up when he says Merry Christmas Mr. Austin and Stone Cold wants to know if this is the real Santa or is it just some piece of trash. Austin says when he was 6 years old he was a good little SOB and this fraud should know what he got for Christmas that year. Santa says Austin got a Barbie doll and tiddlywinks and Austin says Santa can shove those tiddlywinks up his ass. Austin wants a better look at Chris Kringle, Stone Cold isn't convinced that this is the real Santa, so he asks the audience to give him a hell no if they think this is just some random jagoff wanting kids to sit on his lap. The crowd agrees that this punk isn't the real Santa, so Stone Cold gives Mr. Claus a stunner. Santa takes the stunner beautifully by the way. Stone Cold drops the elbow on Santa and he throws him out of the ring, the crowd go nuts, Merry Christmas one and all. Someone out there right now is complaining about this because even at Christmas time there better not be any dumb or stupid shit on these wrestling shows. On Monday Nitro, Rick Steiner and Scott Norton have a match, so there, hopefully that restores balance, some big meaty men for ya. After that crazy bump last week, you'd hope these two would take it a bit easier this week but nah, they go full throttle, but thankfully there are no close calls this time around, except one small thing. Kevin Nash, Rick Rude and Eric Bischoff call the action, Rick hits a Steiner line right at the opening bell, Norton replies with a corner clothesline and a jumping shoulder tackle, Scott does a little damage on the outside and Norton prevents Rick from getting back in the ring. As Norton goes back to the outside to deliver more punishment, Rick Rude talks about Hogan giving him a belated Christmas present by breaking Sting's neck. And when the action gets inside the ring again, Rick takes another clothesline. Rick's having real trouble getting started here. Norton delivers a vertical suplex and afterwards Rick wakes up and we see the scoop par slam. Rick then drops an elbow on Norton. And here's that one small thing I mentioned earlier. Rick sets Norton up for a belly to belly from the middle rope and the landing isn't too good. If you watch that again, Again though, you'll see what happened. Scott didn't have his feet on the middle rope at all, so Rick was trying to completely deadlift his opponent here. All things considered, he done a pretty decent job. After the suplex, Conan hits the ring and that's gonna be a DQ ladies and gents. Scotty Steiner runs in for the save, Vincent comes in, Ray Trailer comes in, DiBiase kicks Vincent's ass on the outside and that's it. Fans did pop for Scott Steiner and Trailer, but I don't think they're sold on this whole NWO Nitro business. Remember that when fans bought tickets to this show, they weren't expecting any of this at all. The 
Rock versus The Undertaker's next up on Raw, while over on Nitro we've got Disco Inferno versus Kurt Hennig. It's champion versus champion on Nitro, but only the US titles on the line, meaning it's as predictable as they come and Disco has no chance. Brilliant. Kurt laughs at the Inferno before the two lock up. A drop down leapfrog sequence ends with Kurt Hennig landing a dropkick, and I like how Kurt said, nah, fuck that, when he was supposed to jump over Disco. <laughs> Disco takes another dropkick that sends him to the outside, and Disco tries to crawl back to the locker room. Remember last week when Disco was supposed to once again be a babyface? Well, here he is crawling to the back and Kurt has to bring him back to the ring. Kurt kicks the Inferno around a bit and he chops Disco as hard as he can. Disco, the man who was just crawling back to the locker room, tries to fight back but he gets put down with a clothesline. Kurt then snaps Disco's neck and this didn't look good this time around, sorry but it didn't. And Hennig beats the hell out of Disco when the TV champ tries to fight back from the mat. Disco gets his face stretched and clawed, he gets kicked around a little more. Kurt tells Disco to say hello to his mom and he gets choked on the bottom rope. And there's no point even caring when Disco fights back at this point because Kurt puts him right back down on the mat. The crowd have no reason to get into this match. The NW commentators are cracking jokes about Larry Sabisco, and <laughs> this is just bad. When Disco actually does pull off a move, a swinging neckbreaker, the crowd finally make noise, but Kurt pulls off a perfect plex immediately afterwards and the audience collectively sighs. Fucking brutal match, and it all comes down to how the match was planned out. Fans had nobody to cheer for, and the guy who should have been cheered for got his ass kicked from bell to bell, and he also tried to run away. On Raw, we hear Shawn Michaels and Triple H having an argument in the DX locker room and HBK storms out. China follows HBK as the WWF Champion tells Hunter he should go to hell. The IC Champion comes to the ring with the nation, but without his IC belt. Looks like Rock didn't go for that swim after all. Taker comes down and these fans shit their pants when the dead man turns the lights on in the arena. And here we go, Rock vs Undertaker. These two would have quite a few wars down the road and this right here is their first televised meeting inside the ring. Taker gets distracted by D'Lo and this allows Rock to get in a few punches, but a big boot and a clothesline puts the Rock in his place and the Phenom takes control. Another big boot sends Rocky to the mat and Taker lands a leg drop. The commentators say the outlaws are trying to find mankind backstage and they've brought a cameraman too, so we'll check in on the tag champs in a moment. Taker applies a wrist lock, he walks the top rope to perform old school, but Paul Bearer shows up and Taker gets distracted. Kama punches the dead man right in his big evil and Taker gets crotched on the top rope. We then go to commercial break and we come back to see The Undertaker getting attacked by Kama and D'Lo on the outside. Back in the ring, The Rock kicks the Phenom as the crowd chant Rocky sucks. Taker finds himself in the corner where both Rock and Kama are able to do some damage. Erd Hebner can't see shit tonight. And the dead man then takes the people's elbow. When Taker kicks out, The Rock realizes what he has to do to win this match. He applies a deadly nerve pinch. Taker's got a face on him as if to say, I can't believe this cheeky bastard's putting me in a nerve pinch. Farouk's absolutely disgusted that Rock would stoop so low, and Kama just remembered that he left his PlayStation on at home. The nerve pinch stays locked in for ages, Taker fights out but Rock comes back with a clothesline, and then we see more big evil abuse when Rock punches Taker right in the… in the penis. Earl asks Rock if he punched Taker in the dick and Rock says no, Earl says that's ok then, you may continue. And oh nerve pinch number 2, unfortunately we don't get to number 3 because Taker begins his comeback once the hole gets broken up. Taker lands a few rights and lefts and Rocky goes down after a famouser. Dilo tries his best to distract the Phenom but it's no use. The Undertaker chokeslams the IC champion, we see the tombstone pile driver, but then the lights go out. Here comes the Undertaker's little brother, still looking for a scrap. God's sake big man, it's Christmas. Paul Bear says Taker's nothing but a shell of the man that he once was. Paul says he's ashamed he had anything to do with the Undertaker. He can't believe he once stood by the Undertaker's side. Paul says Taker's parents are celebrating Christmas with the worms and the maggots, and that's when Taker goes after Bearer. Kane stops the Phenom and Kane launches an attack, but Taker grabs his little brother by the throat. Finally, Taker shows a little aggression, but he refuses to do anything more. Kane destroys the Undertaker while Paul continues to say that the Undertaker's nothing. Paul says 1998 will be the year of Kane as Taker lays in the corner, and Kane then sets off his paro. The Shawn Michaels vs Triple H match is up next on Raw while Harlem Heat take on Lodi and Scotty Riggs on Nitro. 
China makes her way down to the ring first, she's staying neutral it seems. HBK then comes to the ring, but when Triple H makes his entrance, he gets jumped by Owen Hart. Looks like Owen isn't gonna listen to what Vince said last week. Owen gets in a few shots before Commissioner Slaughter and Shawn Michaels save Triple H, and Owen gets sent to the back. HBK and Triple H accuse Slaughter of setting this attack up, and Slaughter doesn't deny it. He just smiles before walking back through the curtain. Sean argues with Jerry Briscoe as Jim Ross announces that the Sean vs Hunter match is still going to take place, it'll just happen later in the show. We then see the outlaws trying to find mankind backstage, they find some dude who was very innocently just hanging out doing absolutely nothing in a dark room, and the outlaws think it's Mick Foley. When they realise they jumped an innocent creep, they run away. On NWO Nitro, Bobby Heenan begs Eric Bischoff for a job, he wants to commentate. Heenan says he's always worked for the number one show and he can see where all this NWO stuff's going, and Bobby wants to be part of it. Heenan's absolutely desperate, Rick Rude and Kevin Nash crack jokes as Bischoff just can't be annoyed listening to Heenan beg. Bischoff thinks Big Nash could do with a break anyway, so Bischoff allows Bobby to jump on commentary, and the show continues on. Mag Tanay ends up taking over from Eric Bischoff during the tag team match. Rude tells Tonight to call the match as Rick sees it and there won't be a problem. Booker T puts Riggs on the mat with a shoulder block and Riggs gets out of a hammerlock with a back elbow. We then see a hip toss from Booker and Scotty replies with a dropkick. Riggs doesn't get enough credit for his dropkicks by the way. Booker hits a sweet spinning sidekick that wipes Parrot Riggs out, and then Stevie Ray comes in with a big old body slam. Riggs tags out when Stevie misses an elbow drop and say bye bye to Scotty for this episode of Nitro, he doesn't tag back in. As a matter of fact, he ends up taking his seat with the rest of his flock comrades and he lets Lodi get his ass kicked by Harlem Heat. I guess we don't expect Riggs and Lodi to win the match anyway, and it would be a bit hypocritical to say this is fine after saying the Disco vs Hennig match was absolutely pointless, but at least here we get to see some sweet offense from Harlem Heat and at least the crowd has something to cheer for. Let's face it, nobody gives a shit about Lodi, so seeing Booker and Stevie decimate an opponent is at least still entertaining, to a certain degree. Harlem Heat win the match, let's move on. Marvelous Mark Merrow takes on Scott Taylor next on Raw while Buff Bagwell wrestles Chris Jericho on Nitro. Merrow says Christmas is a marvelous time of year and he thanks his fans for braving the cold weather to see him perform tonight. The crowd chants Sable, and even though Mark said he wants no one looking at his property, tonight he's gonna make an exception saying it's Christmas and all that. Mark says, Sable, Sable, if you're able, come out from that reindeer stable. <laughs> what? JR says Sable's been running around backstage in a skimpy Christmas outfit, but here she comes dressed like Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Now, there's a pretty big group of people who would find this way hotter than a skimpy outfit, so let's not judge. But Mark knows nothing about furries and he wants to cover Mrs. Merrow up as much as possible. Her red nose even lights up, fantastic. Sable gets sent out of the ring and she takes the reindeer head off. Mero isn't too amused, but he's got a match to wrestle and he'll get back to Sable in a moment. Scott Taylor lights Mero up and he takes Mero down by sliding out of the ring and tripping the marvelous one up. JR says Mero's already fatigued because he talks so much shit before the opening bell, and Scott hits a top rope clothesline before Mero finally begins fighting back. Taylor gets slammed on the mat and Mero smiles as he lays the boots in. He then gets distracted by his wife and this allows Scott to cover Mark but the marvelous one kicks out. Taylor keeps the pressure on with a uh, rolling double kick. Yeah, and that's gonna be the last thing Taylor gets in because Mero delivers a TKO and Mero wins via pinfall. Mero wants to hurt Taylor a little more, but Tom Brandy hits the ring and he saves Scott from another TKO. Imagine getting saved by this jobber. Brandy takes Mero out and Mark finds himself on the outside of the ring, looking for a little comfort from his wife, but Sable walks away from Mark and she reveals that skimpy outfit underneath the reindeer costume. The crowd pops, Sable wishes everyone a Merry Christmas, and good times were had by all, except Mark. On Nitro, it's revealed that Buff Bagwell will face Lex Luger at Starcade, their fourth match in the space of a month. But tonight, Bagwell faces Chris Jericho, a man who is not booked for the Starcade event later in the week. 
Rick Rude calls Bagwell the Buffmeister as the match gets underway. Bagwell slaps Jericho across the face and Chris fights back right away. Bagwell takes a back body drop. Jericho then performs a springboard dropkick and the Buffmeister gets beaten up a bit on the outside. Bagwell tries to take advantage back inside the ropes but he's quickly shut down with a spinning wheel kick followed by a body slam. Chris ends up on the apron after getting knocked off the top rope and he gets knocked into the guardrail after a hard right hand. Bagwell then chokes Chris with his boot before Nitro takes a break and we come back to see Chris land a dropkick in the ring followed by a flying crossbody. The back and forth action continues with a buff Bagwell clothesline and buff slaps Jericho around a little. Jericho tries to fight back but he takes a boot to the face and there's a chin lock right there from buff Bagwell. Eventually the two get to their feet and Jericho performs a double underhook backbreaker. Chris sets buff up on the top rope but Bagwell pushes Jericho away and then we see the blockbuster. Buff Bagwell pins Jericho on NWO Nitro. Bagwell attacks the referee after the bout just because he can and Buff scores another win on the road to Starcade 1997. Over on Raw, Triple H seems confident that he can beat Shawn Michaels, who says if this is what HBK wants then this is what HBK is gonna get. Hunter's also wearing a China shirt, probably trying to sway China into sticking with him for this upcoming main event match, and China whispers to Hunter that he has nothing to prove by beating Michaels. Hunter says this. Of course I do, he's always out here. Oh, I'm the showstopper, I'm the icon. I'm the main event. Try says he has a lesson to teach Sean a little later on. I can't wait. Next we have Kurgan vs April on Raw and another NWO promo on Nitro. So Big Kurgan's back on Monday nights and the Jackal's here with him. The Jackal puts on one of those little diamond stick on shits on a fan's forehead and she looks both delighted and absolutely terrified. Is it supposed to represent a third eye or something? I don't know, but Cornette says the Jackal has this weird pull over people and you know, Callus was a decent speaker and he did carry himself well. It's just a shame he's involved in an overall weak angle. Still, Eightball's gonna try his luck against Kurgan and the Jackal's gonna give us some commentary from outside the ring. Eightball goes after the leg first and that doesn't work out and Jekyll says he's being identified as a cult leader and that isn't true. He just has a message, a message about the Jekyll's revolution, and with all revolutions you're either with it or you get trampled by it. Yeah mate, it sounds like a fucking cult to me. Jackal gets on the apron when April starts doing a little damage, Jackal gets chased around the ring and Kurgan takes advantage with a double axe handle. Back in the ring, Kurgan chokes his opponent with his big boot, 8ball then almost puts the big man down to the mat but the Jackal distracts 8ball again and we see the sidewalk slam. Kurgan wins in the war zone. 8ball tries to attack Jackal and Kurgan after the bout but Ghost Recon and Sniper Elite show up. I thought this faction was done for but apparently not. The other baldy dirty old asshole hits the ring with a 2x4 and the commission get out of harm's way. Jackal bitch slaps his big bitch before heading to the back and then we cut over to the New Age Outlaws trying to once again find mankind. The boys get spooked a little but they don't find Foley. On Nitro, the New World Order come out and once again they're just here to lick Hollywood Hogan's boots. Bischoff sings we wish you a merry six pack and a Hollywood New Year. The wit is absolutely off the charts. Hulk says Ho Ho Hogan which was infinitely better than Bischoff's song. I don't know if I'm reading into this too much or if I've got the intentions completely wrong here, but Hogan holds a sign up that says Vince fears Hogan and Scott takes the sign away and what's interesting is you can hear Scott saying to Bischoff you need to fast forward into the future. Of course, this could just be Scott gloating as usual, but I found it interesting that he also took the sign away. He really didn't need to. You could interpret this as Scott saving Bischoff from embarrassing himself, but it's also likely that there's nothing at all to it. Eric's got another present for Hulk though, and Bischoff's got the Hulkster something that's practical. Hogan can't wear the word belt at night when he's sleeping, I mean he could if he wanted to brother, but Bischoff says Hogan can wear a ring instead that will always remind Hogan that he's the heavyweight champion of the world. Bischoff pulls out the ring and he gets down on one knee, Eric proclaims Hollywood as champion of the world and then Bischoff reveals a few banners. The first is Hogan's Sports Illustrated cover and the second shows Hogan as Thunderlips choking Rocky Balboa from the Rocky 3 movie. Why? I have no idea. But the crowd chant Rocky when the second banner gets revealed. Bischoff says there's more surprises for Hulk planned for Nitro as the promo ends and we see the limousine backing up before Nitro moves on to its final match.
Ken Shamrock takes on The Nation's Dilo next on Raw. On Nitro, Randy Savage takes on Lex Luger. Shamrock starts the match off with a few kicks and Dilo goes down after a dragon screw. Ken then goes for a knee submission but Dilo makes it to the ropes. Dilo continues to struggle as Shamrock delivers a suplex followed by an arm drag and a headlock takeover. Dilo does apply a head scissor submission but Shamrock's quick to counter while on the mat. Shamrock then performs the belly to belly, he applies the ankle lock and the match is over already. Absolute domination. Kama and Farouk then jump on the apron and then The Rock shows up at the entranceway. Rock says he could get the nation to attack Shamrock right now but The Rock's a compassionate man and he's not gonna do that. Instead, The Rock's got a gift for Kenny Boy Shamrock. After saying the UFC's filled with has-beens, Rock gives his gift to Ken, a match against the People's Champion at Royal Rumble 1998. Not only that, The Rock says he'll also put his Intercontinental Championship on the line. Good Guy Rock then calls the nation back and they leave Ken alone, and Ken looks pretty pleased with his Christmas present. After the match, we see Shawn Michaels in China backstage and Shawn's wearing a China shirt also. Jim Ross says things are gonna get ugly a little later on and Shawn says the only thing ugly about DX is Triple H. Sean knows he has nothing to prove but he still looks forward to smacking his buddy around a little in tonight's main event. The Outlaws then find Mankind backstage and a fight breaks out. Mankind sings Christmas carols as he beats up the tag team champions, but the Outlaws fight back and they manage to shove Foley into a walk-in freezer, and the door gets locked. It's not the ice cold temperatures that's going to drive Foley insane, it's the fact that Glacier sleeps in there to maintain his tiny little frosty balls. On Nitro, Randy Savage approaches the announce desk and he dedicates his match to Hulk Hogan. Things don't start off too well at all when Lex ducks a clothesline and Savage gets taken out. The macho man gets thrown from corner to corner and Luger hits a clothesline of his own. Lex then punches and kicks Macho but a boot to the face puts Lex in his place. Savage then chokes Luger on the middle rope and he gets dropped over the top rope. Savage then puts all his weight on Lex's throat and then we see a back elbow from the Macho Man. The fight goes to the outside where Lex fights back, the two fight in the audience briefly but Lex brings it back to the ring where Savage takes three consecutive clotheslines. The referee then takes the forearm smash when Savage moves out of the way, and you know what that means ladies and gents, here comes Buff Bagwell and Kevin Nash. Buff attacks Luger while Macho hides behind Liz, and inside the ring Luger takes a jackknife powerbomb followed by the diving elbow. 1, 2, 3, Randy Savage defeats Lex Luger on NWO Nitro. Randy Savage is not booked for Starcade this week, but he does get involved when yet another match has to get changed at the last minute. We'll talk about all this in the upcoming Starcade video. Nitro closes with Hollywood Hogan getting his final present from the NWO. On Raw, we've got Shawn Michaels vs Triple H. Before Shawn and Triple H lock horns, the artist formerly known as Goldust comes to the ring with Luna for Shawn, and Goldust wants to read Twas the Night Before Christmas to all these fans attending Raw. The audience boos and Goldust gets interrupted by Santa Claus. The artist isn't too happy that old Saint Nick's out here giving out presents. He tries to continue reading his poem but Santa fucking bops him right over the head with his big old sack of toys. Goldust gets taken out by Santa and it turns out that that isn't the real Santa Claus, it's the man they call Vader. Goldust accidentally whacks Luna while getting off the apron and Luna falls over, brilliant. So, Shawn Michaels and Triple H make their entrances and once again China's trying to remain neutral. They take off their China shirts, Hebner holds the European title high in the air, the competitors stretch a little, actually they stretch a lot. Both competitors have a word with China and here we go. The two lock up and Shawn instantly hits the mat. Hunter then comically hits the ropes over and over again, the crowd boos, Hunter then performs the worst splash you've ever seen in your life, and Triple H wins via pinfall. I love Jim Cornette's call afterwards, I highlighted this before in a previous DX video but it's worth playing again. It was a ruse, a ploy, a plot, a plan, a charade, a conspiracy, a sham, we've been conned, hoodwinked, bamboozled, flim flam, and the wall pulled over our eyes even. Hunter celebrates while Sean throws a tantrum and HBK crawls to China to have a good old cry. Sean grabs a mic and he says it's not an easy thing getting defeated for the coveted European title. Sean says he's been in ladder matches, cell matches, marathon matches. 
And this was the most emotional and physical bout HBK has ever competed in. JR says HBK's lost his smile as Triple H takes the microphone. And Hunter says with the exception of the day his child was born, this is the greatest day of his life. Even though Hunter doesn't have a kid, not that he knows of anyway. Sean then tells Sergeant Slaughter to suck it while the commissioner stands at the entranceway. Sarge doesn't have a mic, but fans at home can hear Sarge say that next week Triple H is gonna face Owen Hart. D-Generation X celebrated in the ring as Raw goes off the air. I know people didn't like how this was handled either, but let's not pretend it's the world title that changed hands. Hogan and Bischoff come to the ring and Bischoff thanks Hogan from the bottom of his heart for providing him with this wonderful life he leads now that he's standing beside the world champion. Hogan says the NWO are going to party on through 1998 but the party's over for Sting. This isn't Hogan's first rodeo, Hollywood's used to high pressure situations and at Starcade Sting will be stung and Sting will be another notch on Hogan's belt. Some geezer brings Hogan another gift and Bischoff says this one isn't from him. Eric has no idea what this is. Is. The limo arrives back in the arena and Bret Hart hops out. Hogan thanks Bret for the present, and inside the gift box is a Hulk Hogan head. Hogan's holding his own fucking head and his reaction is so ridiculous that it becomes comedic. This could have been good. Let me take you back to March 1996 when Diesel opened up a casket to find himself lying inside it. Look at that reaction. It was perfect. Fear, unable to talk, unable to digest what was going on. This felt like a natural reaction to seeing something so unnatural and something so fucked up. Hulk, uh, Hulk screams it's my head over and over again. He looks at Bischoff while telling Eric that he's holding his own head and Bischoff's probably like, yeah, I can fucking see that Hulk, come on. Sting appears from the top of the Nitro stage once again and this time he ziplines down to the ring. Nitro fades out just as Sting reaches his destination. Nitro wins this week's episode of Reliving the War. There was a fair bit of nonsense on the show, but the NWO Takeover is another landmark TV show of the Monday Night War, and it's really like nothing else we have ever seen before up until this point. Again, with the benefit of hindsight, we can look back at this now and say it was a bad idea. But if you're going to tell someone which show to watch based on significance and the overall journey through the Monday Night War, then NWO Nitro is a show that you can't really skip. We can also talk about how it was a bad way to promote Starcade and a more traditional go home show could have fared better, but Starcade broke all pay-per-view records up until this point, so there's arguments to be had on both sides. Rock vs Taker was the only worthwhile match on Raw, but I'll admit that I got a kick out of HBK vs Triple H when I watched it back in 1997. I thought it was funny. On our leaderboard, Nitro now has 48 points, Raw has 52, and we've got 13 ties. In the television ratings, Nitro dropped to a 3.5 while Raw climbed to a 3.1. Fans turned the channel when the NWO takeover began and Raw actually beat Nitro in the final hour. So while Nitro still won the overall rating, the message was sent loud and clear. NWO Nitro bombed so hard that the idea of a full-time NWO Nitro show was scrapped. Raw defeated Nitro previously a few times in the quarters, but for Raw to win an entire hour was noteworthy. I give Bischoff credit for trying something so out of the box, and as mentioned, I do think it's a show you need to see if you want to study the wars, but it did drag on too long and it's no wonder people changed the channel. The whole arena remodeling should have been done way, way quicker. Starcade 1997 will be the next video in Reliving the War, so it's another historic night we're going to cover in the series, for better or for worse. Join me and we'll watch Hollywood Hogan vs Sting in the main event. On Raw next week, we learn that Triple H is injured, so Owen Hart gets a new opponent in the Raw main event. Mick Foley brings back Cactus Jack to take on the Outlaws, and instead of fighting each other, Kane and The Undertaker fight side by side. Thank you for watching Reliving the War, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode, and take care.